Ze kwamen terecht bij professor Samuel Epstein van het Verbond voor Kankerpreventie. Op basis van de geheime documenten publiceerde Epstein in 1990 een artikel in The Milkweed, een gerenommeerd tijdschrift over melk, geleid door journalist Piet Harden. Het artikel sloeg in als een bom. One morning, uh, I came in, I think in October of that year, I came into my office and found a great big box of documents. And um, the, it came from Washington, but no indication as to who sent it. This was a box of files of all Monsanto records which had been submitted to the FDA on the veterinary tests in the preceding six years or so. Well, this was great fun. Many of these documents are original documents, uh, and as it says here, company confidential. It can, contains confidential information which not be, may not be reproduced, revealed to unauthorized persons, or sent outside the company without proper authorization. As an investigative journalist, that's the kind of stuff I like to report. Revealing this information made Monsanto and FDA very, very angry because what we were able to establish is that there were dramatic physiological changes in the animals that received the shot, the hormone shots, compared to their control group peers. For example, we see the ovaries of the cows receiving the synthetic hormone in the different treatment groups were, for the right ovaries, 34% larger, 42% larger, and 44% larger. Elsewhere in the stolen files, it shows how there were severe problems with the reproduction of these treated animals. The data is conclusive. We provided the data, the raw data uh, and summary data, peer-reviewed data not done by us to support the submission. Every health authority who has looked at bovine somatotropin has found that it is completely safe for consumers. Volgens Monsanto is er geen enkel probleem met het hormoon. De consument zou er alleen maar voordeel bij doen. Volgens Monsanto zou de chemische samenstelling van de melk niet veranderen bij gebruik van Posilac. Dus de eigenschappen en de smaak zouden dezelfde blijven. Het is untrue of lie, whatever the adjective you want to use. <laughs> um, it's a very different product. It's a very, very different product in many, many ways. First of all, um, as there's a high incidence of mastitis in the cows, there'll be pus in the milk. And then you'd find antibiotics to the, uh, given to the cows to treat the mastitis. So a wide range of antibiotics would be in the milk. Apart from that, and very, very importantly, very substantial increases in levels of IGF-1 or insulinite growth factor 1. There have been a series of studies somewhere in the region of 60 relating increased levels of IGF-1 and breast, colon and prostate cancers. Het is een verbijsterend verhaal. Hoe zit het in andere landen met de erkenning van BSD? Het transgene hormoon is verboden in Europa en Canada. Nochtans neemt de officiële gezondheidsdienst van Canada meestal de beslissingen van de FDA over. Nieuw BST-schandaal in Canada. Monsanto beschuldigt van poging tot omkoping in Canada. Oktober 1998. Drie experts van de Canadese gezondheidsdienst getuigen voor een senaatscommissie rond BST. De zaak is aan het rollen gebracht door klokkenluider Dr. Chef Copper. My question to myself was, what truth am I going to tell the one I know or the word the minister is telling me to tell? And that was my uh, conflict. I would ask each one of you, have everyone, any one of you been uh, lobbied by Monsanto? Any one of you? No. Dr. Hayden. 
I did attend a meeting uh, back uh, approximately about, I believe, 1989-90, uh, and Monsanto representatives had met with uh, myself and my uh, supervisor, Dr. Drennan, and my director, Dr. Messier, and at that meeting, uh, an offer of one to two million dollars was made uh, by the company, and uh, I don't know uh, any more about what became of that, but uh, my director <coughs> indicated after the meeting that he was going to report it to his uh, superiors. How did Monsanto react? Well, Monsanto did not deny that they made the offer of one to two million dollars at this meeting. They later on tried to say, oh, this was an offer of research in Canada uh, to uh, do some more studies in cows in Canada or whatever. So anyway, that's what happened in Canada. The drug was not approved. So the European Parliament, based on what revelations in Canada, banned it forever. And then all of a sudden, we three, Margaret Hayden, Gerard Lambert, and I were dismissed for disobedience. And we fired. All three of us were fired, and those fights are now in courts. Het Amerikaanse congres had intussen een onderzoek geopend op vraag van de tegenstanders van BST. Die vonden het ongehoord dat er geen etiket mocht komen op BST-melk. Want op die manier kon de consument niet kiezen voor BST-vrije melk. Vreemd genoeg heeft het congres het onderzoek nooit afgerond. Bovine growth hormone, BGH, is a test of consumer acceptance of genetic engineering. In the garbage. In the garbage. In the garbage. The cow hormone drug was simply the first major application of biotechnology to food production and Monsanto is a very powerful corporation with many many linkages to top level persons in government uh, I think the prevailing ethic at the federal government was f f biotechnology is so important that we can't let a few little questions about cow safety or human safety get in the way. The reason the FDA approved it is it appeared to be that there was a lot of people that used to work at, had key positions that had worked for Monsanto, came over to the FDA and managed to get the FDA to approve it. It's revolving doors that move up. It's kind of like a double helix, a spiral. Revolving door? Yes, revolving door. The revolving door is not just in agriculture. It tends to be in many, many areas. Donald Rumsfeld was the CEO of Searle, which was a Monsanto subsidiary. The former U.S. trade ambassador, Mickey Cantor, ended up on Monsanto's board. Supreme Court Judge Clarence Thomas used to work for Monsanto. En er zijn er nog die overgestapt zijn van de overheid naar Monsanto. Een onvolledig lijstje uit 1999. Linda Fisher van Milieubescherming naar Monsanto. Michael Friedman van de FDA naar Monsanto. Marshall Hale en Josh King van het Witte Huis naar Monsanto. Margaret Miller van Monsanto naar de FDA. William Ruckershaus van Monsanto naar de FDA. En niet te vergeten Michael Taylor die al verschillende keren heen en terug is gegaan. Once your mission carried out by the FDA, you became Monsanto's vice president for public policy. Right. So there was no conflict of interest for you? No, the, the, no. And, and again, the rules are the rules, and I played within the rules. I think in terms of public acceptance, it, it's been one blunder after another. If you're trying to have a strategy for, yeah. for having the public understand and accept the new technology, having the first application of it be, uh, have, be related to milk, which we already have more than we need, it created, you know, uh, it helped create a climate of, of suspicion. suspicion. I think the idea that, that companies are not required in every case of a GMO to submit the product to FDA, such as is required in Europe, I think that from a public confidence, public acceptance standpoint, that's not a sufficient system. I personally have said that Congress should change the law. Congress should create a mandatory 
notification system that ensures that every product is looked at by FDA and that FDA makes a safety judgment about every product. Het is bijzonder interessant dat Michael Taylor aan de telefoon kritiek uit op de reglementering die hij zelf ondertekend heeft in 1992. Wat dachten de experts binnen de FDA toen zelf van? Was er een consensus over de GGO-regelgeving? Uit interne documenten blijkt dat de FDA de bezorgdheid van zijn eigen wetenschappers negeerde. De auteur van dit artikel is Stephen Drucker. Steven Drucker werkt als advocaat voor een coalitie van NGO's. Hij heeft klachten ingediend tegen de FDA en gezorgd dat de interne FDA-documenten rond GGO's openbaar werden gemaakt. We received over 44.000 pages from the FDA's own files and they revealed that the FDA has been lying to the world since 1992, if not before. But they continue to lie. They are still lying. They claim that there is an overwhelming consensus in the scientific community that genetically engineered foods are as safe as their conventionally produced counterparts. And they claim that there has been sufficient data to back up this consensus. Both of those claims are blatant lies. There are several examples. For instance, Dr. Louis Preble of the FDA's microbiology group wrote, quote, there is a profound difference between the types of unexpected effects from traditional breeding and genetic engineering, unquote. Then Dr. Preble added in his memo that some of the aspects of genetic engineering may be more hazardous. The concern expressed by the FDA's various scientific experts was so clear and unmistakable that the FDA official whose job it was to track and summarize the scientist's input, Dr. Linda Call, wrote a memo to the FDA biotechnology coordinator, Dr. James Mariansky. According to the internal FDA's files, which have been declassified now, uh, there were many in-house critics, I mean, among the scientists of the FDA, uh, about the uh, proposed policy. I have, for instance, a memorandum sent to you by Linda Carl. Right. She stated, the processes of genetic engineering and traditional breeding are different. Traditional breeding are different and according to the technical experts in the agency. They lead to different risks. Different risks. The point was that we had many people with many different views. Uh, Linda Call, of course, had wrote that in her memo. But in fact, when we finished the policy, all the scientists agreed with the policy. Now, FDA has, of course, looked at the use of genetic engineering and has no information that simply the use of the techniques creates products that differ in safety or quality. Even before the consistent warnings in the memos from the FDA's own scientists, the FDA had very clear warning because the very first genetically engineered food supplement that came to market in the United States caused a major epidemic. Do you remember what happened in 89 with uh, L. Uh, tryptophan? Do you remember? Yes. It was a bioengineered amino acid. We know very well what's amino acid and... Right. That killed dozens of people and made hundreds and hundreds sick. It caused an epidemic of an unusual disease called EMS. Right. And how many, many people died? Right, but we have many... 37 and more than 1,000 people disabled. Do you remember? I do and remember. And you said, according to FDA administrative record, we do not yet know the cause of EMS, nor can we rule out the engineering of the organism. Did you say that, that I read? Yes. James Mariansky sluit niet uit dat genetische manipulatie onverwachte gevolgen kan hebben voor onze gezondheid. Maar verder heeft hij niet ingegrepen. We gaan op zoek naar onafhankelijke wetenschappers die onderzoek hebben gedaan naar dit voor de consument toch wel erg belangrijke onderwerp. Wereldberoemd wetenschapper Arpad Pustai verliest zijn werk nadat hij waarschuwt voor genetisch gemanipuleerd voedsel. Dat was in 1998. Thank you. 
Oostai werkt bij het Schotse Rowlet Institute.